Welcome everyone to a CUDA worksheet tutorial. This is factoring trinomials where the coefficient of the squared term is bigger than one. This is like the number one thing that causes headaches for a lot of my students. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you two different ways that we can approach this problem. This is the way I grew up learning is you put your parentheses just like you're factoring when it's uh, equal to one. But this time we have to consider factors of 3p squared and then we also have to, let me erase this, and then we also have to consider factors for the negative five. And then we have to consider them in relation to each other. What do I mean by that? Well, let me go ahead and show you. Well, first we think of factors of 3p squared, and we have 3p and p. This one's fairly simple. Okay, so we're gonna put a 3p and p there. Now, if this were something like 6p squared, well, now we'd have more because we could have 3 and 2p. We could have 6p and 1p. So we'd have more combinations with something like that. But this one, 3 is a prime number, so it makes it a little bit easier. Negative 5 is also a prime number. So we're going to have uh, negative 5 and positive 1 or positive 5 and negative 1. So those are our possibilities there. Now, here's the deal. We could put a negative 5 there or a positive 1 there. We could put the negative 5 over here, and we could put the 1 over there, or we could make this positive and this negative. So even though it's a uh, negative 5 is like a prime number, there's still four possibilities of where you could put this. And the reason why we need to try all those possibilities is because we're multiplying these inside and outside terms. And it matters now because this 3p is not the same as this p like we had when the coefficient was 1. So in this first method, and I'm gonna show you grouping right after this, so if you wanna just skip this part, that's fine. Grouping is coming next. In this first part, we need to play around with these different combinations. So I always test it by multiplying the uh, inside and outside terms and adding them and seeing if I get this middle term here. So here I get 5p, then I get negative 3p. 5p plus negative 3p is nah, positive 2p, not negative. So I know that I did this wrong. Let me go ahead and try a different combination. I could try, and I'm gonna do like, I know what it is at this point, because usually when you get a uh, the opposite of what you're looking for, you just switch the signs. But I'm gonna show you like the process that people might go through. So then I'm gonna put positive five here, negative one here. I know negative one times five is negative five. Okay, that one. So I'm gonna do uh, my inside and outside terms now. Whoops, wrong color. So I get negative 1p, and then I get 3 times 5, I get 15p. That's not close, that's 14p. So I know what I did wrong, okay? Let's go back to how I had it. I was closer there. Move the 1, move the 5, okay? And then I get negative 5p here, I get positive 3p here. Those add together, give me negative 2p, and now I know I did this correctly. So this is going to be my final factorization of this trinomial, okay? So you can do this method where you play around the different slots. It's not a bad way to go. I think it's actually pretty good, decent, um, not a lot, uh, a learning curve. It's a little bit of trial and error, but as you do it more and more, you get better at that process. Now I'm gonna show you factor by grouping, okay? So remember this, I'm gonna just show factor by grouping from now on. Factor by grouping takes into account that we understand that these first and last terms are a result of them being multiplied together. So we're gonna first multiply three times negative five, the coefficients in front, okay? In this case with the constant, it's just the constant. So we have three times negative five, and that gives us negative 15, okay? We're gonna box this negative 15, and now we're gonna think of factors of negative 15. So we have five and three, we have 15 and one, okay? But we could have negative five, positive three. We could have, sorry, I forgot to include. We could have positive five, negative three. We could have negative 15, positive one, ne positive 15, negative one. So there's four different possibilities, okay? But we're, we're gonna look for those that have a sum of negative two. In that case, it's only this, negative five and three, okay? So that's what we're looking for. Now what we do is we're gonna rewrite this whole thing so that this negative five and three are in that expression. So we have three p squared, I'm gonna rewrite that just as it is, okay? I'm gonna write the negative five just as, as it is, but now I'm gonna write this as negative five p plus three p. 
Why? Because this has a sum of negative 2p, so I'm good there. It's the same thing, it's just expressed a little differently now, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor by grouping. In order to factor by grouping, I need to put things, terms, that have common factors next to each other. So I don't like this negative 5p there. I want to move it over next to my 5 because they have a common factor, okay? Look here now. Notice how, as I rewrote this, we have a 3 here, a 3 here, a p there, a p there, okay? So we can factor out. We have a negative 5, negative 5. No p, but that's okay. So we're going to factor out these common factors that I highlighted there. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going to put two parentheses, okay? In this first one, we said that we we're going to factor out a 3 because there's a 3 there, and 1p, we have to take the smallest variable, so we're going to take out 3p. What's left inside? We have this p, and then plus 3p times what would give me 3p? We can do 3p divided by the greatest common factor would give me 1. So I have 3p times p plus 1 is the same thing as this, okay? I just factored it. Now we're moving on to this, okay? Notice how I'm going to take the greatest common factor from both these terms. So I have negative 5 and negative 5. So I can factor out a negative 5 from both. What's left inside? Well, I have negative 5 times what gives me negative 5p? That's p, okay? Negative 5 times what gives me negative 5p, and that is just p. That's why that is there. Then negative 5, my greatest common factor, times what gives me negative 5, and that's 1. So I write plus 1, okay? This is the whole point. You should get this. Notice I have a p plus 1 here. I have a p plus 1 there. Now I can factor this out, okay? Just as in the same way I can factor out. Imagine if this was 3x minus 5x. I could factor out an x out in front and leave 3 minus 5 inside, okay? Well, I'm going to factor out this p plus 1. What's left inside? Well, I have left inside. I need a parenthesis around this. 3p minus 5, the leftovers, okay? Sorry to call them leftovers, but it's just the way it is. 3p minus 5. And notice how I got the same thing as I had before. Okay? And I'm done. 3p minus 5, p plus 1, and that's how I factor by grouping. It seems a little complicated, but I promise as you do it more often, it's not too bad. And actually, I used to be a believer in the other method, the first method I showed, and I think it's more simple, so if you're learning it, I think it's more simple. But if you want uh, probably a more efficient way to go, then factor by grouping is probably the most efficient way. So again, we're going to start by multiplying the constant by the leading coefficient. So we have 2 times negative 9. That gives us negative 18. Now we're thinking of factors of negative uh, 18. And we're keeping in the back of our mind that we need these factors to add up to 3n. So clearly, we're not going to choose negative 18 and positive 1. That's too big. Okay, so that's too big. We can think of 6 and 3 maybe, or 9 and 2. 9 and 2, no. Okay, so 9 and 2, even the difference is 7, no good. Okay, is it negative 6 and positive 3, or is it positive 6 and negative 3? Well, I hope you see that it's positive 6 and negative 3, because that gives us a positive 3n. So now what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this, 2n squared, plus... 6n minus 3n, okay, that gives us positive 3n minus 9, okay? So now we have uh, this into two groups, okay? Remember, we want to group it into um, areas where they have common factors. So here they have a common factor of 3, that's good. Here they have a common factor of 2. That's good. Notice how the 2 would not have anything in common with the 3n, so that's why we're definitely going to pair these two and these two together, okay? Now, what, are our, what is our GCF here and here? I already said it was 2, but we also have the n. We're going to take the lowest, um, the lowest value of n because we can't factor on n squared if there's only an n there. So we're going to factor out 2n, and we're going to be left with n plus uh, what is that? 3. 2n times 3 is uh, 6n. Good. Then we're going to factor out a negative 3 that's present in both of those. No n though. Minus 3. Negative 3 times what gives me negative 3n? That's n. 
Negative three times what gives me negative nine, and that's positive three. Negative three times positive three gives me uh, negative nine. Notice now how we have the n plus three and the n plus three. So we are gonna factor out the n plus three, keeping it together. And then what's left? What do we not include in that uh, GCF? We didn't include the, ne uh, the two n nor the negative three. So we need to leave those guys by themselves in a separate set of parentheses, and there's our answer, okay? Let's go ahead and do a couple more of these. Okay, let's go ahead and jump to number four. Here we have five n and 12, or sorry, five and 12, so we need to multiply 12 times five, and we see a positive uh, 19, so it's all positives, that's good. Oops, sorry, that's 60. So we're gonna be working with 60. Now, what factors of 60 have a sum of 19? Well, 60 is the same thing as six times 10, that's no good, that's 16. What about 12 times five, that's 17. What about 15 and four? Bingo, there we go, that equals 19. So we're gonna split this up, five n squared plus 15 n plus four n and then plus 12. Now imagine if I had accidentally, well not accidentally, but I had written this, okay? Notice how I can't factor out anything from the coefficients there. So I wouldn't wanna pair those two together. That's why I want the 15 near the, the five because they have a common coefficient. They're more, I have a GCF with those two. Okay, so I wanna pair these two up and I wanna pair those two up. So when I pair these two up, I'm gonna factor out a five N and I'm left with N plus three, okay? That's the GCF between those two terms. Okay, I'm gonna change color here. So as I change, as I factor this out, I have biggest common factor of four, that's it. And then I have N plus three again. These are uncommon, I'm gonna factor out the N plus three. N plus three, what am I left with inside? I'm left with the 5n, this is ugly, <laughs> 5n plus 4, and I am done. This is my uh, factorization. And I can check my answer too, if you're like, whoa, 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 this is a little abstract, how do I know? Well, I multiply n times uh, 5n, I get 5n squared, then I get plus 4n, then I get plus 15n, and then I get plus 12. Combine like terms, 19n plus 12, 5n squared. Okay, so this is factor by grouping. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can repeat this process. Some of them get a little tricky. Just keep in mind, anytime you see this uh, last term have a minus, that's you're gonna be looking for the difference. Well, actually, let me go ahead and do one more. If you're good with this, okay, go ahead and take off, but I'm gonna show one more just in case you need it. Okay, if I have a negative six, that means I'm looking for the difference. Okay, this last term negative means I'm looking for the difference of the terms. What do I mean? Well, for, first I'm gonna multiply 15 times six. Oh, 15 times, uh, da, 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 90. So I get 90, negative 90 actually. Okay, so now I'm gonna be looking for the difference of terms giving me negative 27. That's what I mean by that. Okay, so which has a difference of 27? Um, I'm guessing 30 and three. Okay, the reason why I knew that is I knew it had to be a big number. It had to be a number bigger than 27 as a factor of 90 because I was looking for the difference. If you have this last term positive like we had in the previous example, we know we're gonna be adding the two numbers together to have the sum of 19. This one we look for the difference. Six minus three gave us three n because the last term was negative. Here we had the last term negative, so we were looking for the difference. Same thing here. So this one, you're gonna be looking for the sum. Sum of two numbers, that gives you 53. So you're looking for numbers that are smaller than 53. Here we had difference, so we're looking for a factor that's bigger than 27, and that's 30. Has to be negative, so we want the bigger number to be negative, and there we go. That's a way to help us um, do this problem a little more quickly, knowing that we're gonna have to factor. So I'm gonna put the small numbers together and the big numbers together. I'm gonna to factor out a 15n here, that gives me n minus two. I'm gonna factor out uh, positive three here, and I'm put n minus two. Now, imagine that you didn't know to factor out it, like you didn't recognize that you, can, you want the n minus two twice there. Imagine if you factored out a negative three. So factor out the negative three, you get minus n plus three. Notice how, or sorry, plus two. 
Notice how these aren't matching, so you know you would need to change it so that you'd factor out a positive three instead because these need to match, okay? So I factor out a positive three instead, positive three, I get n minus two. Now I can finish this off, n minus two times 15n plus three. And that's how you do factor by grouping. Those are some quick tips for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Look forward to seeing you next time on West Explains Best.